have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. And here's your host. everyone, Charles McCutcheon here. I'm your favorite entrepreneur. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Charles's Corner. Thank y'all for coming out. You could be anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here. This is what I decided to do, y'all. For those who have not heard of me before, you can find me all over social media. I'm, I'm around. I'm around in small places. I don't make a lot of noise right now because I'm on, a, I'm on this journey, so I have to stay focused. But uh, I'm about to make some noise, so don't don't uh, just be looking out for me, I guess. But if you want to get in touch with me, you can just find me all over, really. Uh, inbox me or what have you, because I check those silent inboxes on different social media platforms. What I'm doing is bringing people together, looking at, for me, it's called financial freedom. So we have different topics. And I decided that, you know, this is the beginning of the year, really. The best thing to do at the beginning of the year for me, and I think everybody else, we have to focus on mindset. And I bring up mindset because that's one of those things that I did not want to do, even though I had people out there that were saying, hey, you need to start looking at mindset. And what I found out is along my journey, I had to go back to learn mindset. And I'm going to give you all some things that, you know, hopefully you can take away some things you may know, some things you may not. And I get it. You know, I started from a project. So I'm going to tell you all straight up. And I know everybody going to get the dollar. Everybody want to get to the money. At the end of this, I'm going to show you a few things that you can use, at least one thing, to get to the money. (laughs) But I will tell you this. As you go down your journey, whatever your journey is, if you haven't focused on the mindset, you're going to end up having to go back. And so I'm just trying to save some people some time. So we're going to stick to mindset. It's the basics of getting money. And I get it. It's the mindset gets you to the money. I'm going to throw it in at the end. Now, I think it could change somebody's life, some of the stuff I'm about to say. So just uh, sit back, relax, and I'm just going to put a few things out there so you can get a glimpse of your own mindset. And it's almost like I always say you can't see the picture when you're in the frame. And a lot of people uh, try to. Now, and I, I know you've had probably sunglasses on before, and, you know, we put them on the top of our head when we're not using them. And some people be looking for their sunglasses like, I cannot find my dog on sunglasses until somebody else comes up and they say, you got them on top of your head and you feel a little stupid 
because they were right there all along. That's kind of like mindset. You don't know what you don't know. So there's two sides to it. You have a fixed mindset. You have a growth type mindset. So I look at it as positive and negative. If you have something that's fixed and you don't want to move, like you don't want to change the way you are, then you're not growing. If you're not growing, you're dying. That's just me personally what I believe. I think that's like willfully being just ignorant. And it happens to a lot of people. And it's tough to gain perspective on something when you're inside of it. It's not impossible, but, you know, you got to work towards the first step. So one of, one of the things I look at is the first step is learning what your mindset is. Hopefully, you, you know, you want to move a little bit differently than what you're already doing. So you can choose your mindset. And that choice is going to have an uh, impact on you, your ability to learn, to grow, your willingness to get back up after you get knocked down. If you meet somebody who have not been knocked down, they haven't gotten up yet. That's just what I believe. It allows me to network better. It allows me to interact with people better. And I, it, it's a learned behavior, and I think we all have to learn it. it. It surrounds our belief system. You know, your mindset makes up your belief systems and, like, how you approach a problem or even your attitude. It's your main frame. It's like your computer, your brain. Like, your brain can tell you what's possible or what's not possible. And by what you're telling your brain, that's your mindset. That's your makeup. Fixed mindset. And y'all know I'm about to uh, tell y'all about some people that y'all already know. And some of y'all are friends with them, some of them may be family. It is what it is. So a fixed mindset, they just hold on to that. They don't. They can't change. They don't want to change. It's not they, that they can't. They don't want to change. They have the intelligence. They may have the talent, but they don't want to change the way they think. They believe that what they believe. So, and it's almost like a push and pull with them. It's, and some of them don't want to change. So it's it's just hard trying to influence them or show them something different. So, and and this is kind of what I was about to say to you. You might have somebody out there with a fixed mindset. <clears throat> that's pretty good at this thing, whatever that thing may be. And then you'll have somebody that's better than them. And then they're in their mindset. They'll be like, man, if I was really good at this, I wouldn't even have to try, but you're better than me. So obviously I'm not good at it, even though they may be good at it and they may want you to not be good at it. So those are what we call the haters that's out there. And some people out there are secretly hating on you. If you make it moves, I guarantee you, you have a few of them. And it's okay. And uh, what they won't do is they won't uh, block you off of social media. They'll keep up with you to try to see, you know, where you're failing at. And they may tell a few people where you're failing, but they'll never tell people of your accolades and what you're doing that's good. So those are, y'all know them type people. I ain't the only one that knows now. So uh, those are the types you're doing well. They don't want you to, and they won't tell nobody. They'll keep their successes up on high and rarely help people for fear of, like, you surpassing them. (laughs) I know I'm telling on somebody. They'll most likely only try something if they know they'll succeed. If they they don't think they're going to succeed, they probably won't even try. They'll give up because they do that self-talk. So fix and growth. These six people are a little different. They're a little different. My thing is I separate myself from those type people, and I look at those are negative type people. So you can love somebody from a distance, and it's okay. I think you have to look at you first and what's good for you because being around bad people can make you sick. A lot of people sick for no reason. They don't even understand why because you may be around the bad people. Some people having headaches every day because you're around those people who are giving you headaches. My grandmother would say, why are you still staying around that person? If you need if you need some aspirin for a headache, figure out what gave it to you and stop doing what you was doing. <laughs> so now we have the growth mindset. Those are the people that have the ability to change. Even though they may be stuck somewhere, they're willing to make the change and willing to be around the right people and take the right actions to be successful. So that means we can improve and develop on our talents, and your mindset will allow you to, okay, I failed this time, but that just means I need to find another way to do this. Oh, my goodness. All the time. I have to find another way to do it, even though that didn't work. Okay, well, great. Not a big deal. Or that person didn't work out. Now I'm going to figure out, okay, figure out the why behind it and then go another direction. So those with growth mindset, they look at failure as a way to do something different. It's just another opportunity to be better. 
you know, you can do it a hundred times. That hundred and first time may be the time that it works, but the, all the hundred, you know, it won't go through for you. So people with a growth type mindset, they don't deny other people's talent. If somebody good, they're just good. I acknowledge people, hey, you're doing your thing out there, good stuff. Shoot, I'm trying to get mine on, you know? And so I work at my craft so I can be better. It's, I'm, I don't particularly care, and that's not a not the best word to use, but I don't particularly care that somebody's, you know, doing their thing. I say congratulate them and keep going. The one thing I do look at is when I do things, I look at who's clapping. And for those that are not clapping, you've got to separate yourself from those people because those are the fixed mindset people that probably don't want you to win. But they want you to clap when they win. I just separate myself from those people. So the first step in all this is develop, is, is understanding where you are. Developing a growth mindset is recognizing that there even there's such a thing called a growth mindset. Or a fixed mindset is recognizing and saying, okay, I want to change. I want to do something different. And you can keep doing what you've been doing, but you don't keep getting what you've been getting. So, again, most of us remain unconscious to, like, the filters that we carry. And once we understand the idea of both of them, from the fix to the growth, we can just start to examine our own self. And, like, okay, if you're not doing self thing, things for yourself to understand where you are, I don't know how anybody else can help you if you're not even, well, one, trying to get help or – like you say, you can't see the picture when you're in the frame. You don't know that your stuff is jacked up. And that's a lot of people out there. They think they stuff don't think, don't stink. And it's like, well, your stuff is stinking a little bit, you know? And so it's more of self-awareness. So we have to have the kind of awareness that when we start to make choices about what's feeding you, you got to make choices around who you're around. And when I say who you're around, those people are feeding you, whether you want to believe it or not. Uh, subconscious, your subconscious is being fed every day, whether you believe it. And some people say, well, I only watch the good parts of the news. No, you don't. If you're watching news, you're getting negativity. And I would say personally, 80, 85% of the news is negative. All we do is see people getting killed and you see this and that. And it's a lot of negativity. And you've seen that, that one ray of hope, but you didn't already taken in all of the negative stuff subconsciously. You can't take in negativity and put out positivity. It doesn't work. The negativity is still there, but it's in a, on a subconscious level. So we have to be aware of who we're around, what we allow to come inside. It's a choice. Like who's feeding you? Who are you around? What type of books are you reading? Are you watching too much TV? Those are negative things that we can, we can change. Look at all the positive things that we can be pulled towards. Pull towards those people that, that's clapping when you win. Pull towards those people that have your back. When, when you're down and out. So other strategies, you know, that's a strategy I use is I limit the people that I allow, I allow access. And I think that's, you know, it's harsh to say, I think, but that's just where it is. You have to limit who you allow access into your world. That's why I see all these people be like, they keep going through bad situations, but they keep allowing the wrong people around them. I'm like, you have a choice whether you are around them or not, but you're choosing to be around bad people again and something bad happens, again and something bad happens, again and something keeps continuing to happen. It's like, when are you going to wake up? And I got to put this out there. I was talking to one of my nephews just about about four days ago, and, you know, he keeps getting things to happen to him, but he's not looking at his actions. He's pointing the finger at everything and everybody else. Well, if this would have happened, then I would be over here. I'm like, no, sir. Point the finger back at you. Take ownership of what you're doing. You're not doing what you should be doing. You're doing the exact same thing over and over and over, and you're expecting different results, but you haven't changed. So I told him, whenever you get ready, sir, let me know because I'm watching you. And what I mean by that, just to let you all know, he may hear this one year. Uh, years down the road, I have something that can help him out in his situation, but he's not ready for it. And a lot of people won't be ready for something that you want to pass as a blessing. And I choose to give it when I see change, because if you give something to somebody, like uh, let's give you just a off-the-wall example. 
You got a 13-year-old. You buy him a new BMW 750. I mean, what do you think they're going to do with it? Are they going to crash it? Are you? I mean, let's be for real. So you can't give certain things to certain people until they're ready. So you can help to groom them, and that's what I've done over the years, but people will only do what they want to do. Once you start getting kids 18, 19, 20, 21, they're going to do what they want to do, and I'm not mad at them. Hey, do you. But the, when you're older, you've already been there, done that. I've seen the same road you're walking down, brother. I walk down some of them streets, and I'm trying to help you, but until you can see it for self, then, you know, you out on your own. I'm not mad, but I'm not going to hold it against you. But when you're ready, I'll be able to see it. You don't even have to tell me that you're ready. And the same thing with other people that I'm in the end that tries to get into my circle, they're not ready for what I have to, what I have to give, what I can give to them to take them to the next level or the next step or to put them around people that are, that are professionals. I would never introduce somebody that was negative, somebody that's just not on their game to one of my mentors or somebody in my circle, because then they're a representative of me and I can't have that. So I had somebody, <laughs> this one lady, she was like, Charles, introduce me to your mentor. And I was like, well, why do you want to talk to my mentor? She's like, because I wanted to ask him about, who's talking real estate? He said, because I want to ask him about wholesaling. I said, well, he's not, a, he's a multimillionaire from like the 90s. It's like, he's really, he's not wholesaling. That's, that's not what he does. Well, I wanted to ask him a question about it. I said, well, what question is that? Because this is the thing she don't understand. If I were to introduce you to him and you ask him a simple question on wholesaling, he going to look at me and say, Charles, why would you not just answer the question? Why would you, you know, why are you wasting my time, really, with this person with a simple question that you could have answered? Negative. Won't happen. Not on my watch. Then I got a billionaire mentor, and I had this guy. I was going to meet my meet him up in D.C. And this guy that I, you know, that I work with, he was like, "Hey, I, I wish I could go with you." And I had another guy. He was like, "Man, I wish I could be a part of that. Can I go?" And I said, "No, sir. This is not that type of party." So you have to be, even though these are quality people that I'm working with, that relationship that I bring in, you can't just, you know, it's far few in between maybe one out of I don't even know what number that you get a million a billionaire mentor mentor with the B a billionaire mentor there's not many people that have those and I have to cherish that relationship and I can't just spring people on hey meet this person you don't do that you have to you know foster that care for it like I've known this guy over five years now and and we're just now doing our first deal together like our first deal after five years, I never asked him for nothing, not one thing. But now we're about to do our first deal after five years. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. So I would never spring somebody on him out of the blue. Hey, meet my friend. And he's going to look at me like we were going to have this conversation because I wanted to teach you. This is what he told me. I want to teach you about building wealth. And I want to teach you about the gold industry. So we're going to have uh, – I'm going to have him for about seven days. We're going to D.C., we're going to New York, and we may go somewhere else, but he's going to be training me on how to build wealth. I've never been taught by a billionaire. I, you know, I don't even know what to expect, but I'm going to be a writing – I'm going to be a writing fool taking copious notes and asking questions and learning and taking it all in. We're going – I'm just telling all my business. I don't care. We're going to a refinery up in New York so he can introduce me to the people in the precious metals industry, from the diamonds to the gold to the copper to all those different commodities that we have out there. And I'm actually – he's teaching me that industry right now. As I'm, and as I'm talking to you all right now, I'm learning that industry from him because he's been in it over 20 years. So I'm learning from the expert. He has gold mines and businesses and multi-billionaire, multi-billion dollar industries that he's a, that he's uh corporations and things of that nature so be mindful of who you introduce to your network so it's it's more like asking yourself questions like people don't even know that who you're around can shift your home hormone balance and change your mood <laughs> it's crazy and 
how you fit your your like your body language, your body language, it, it tells a story. You know, our body language, like some people are slumped over, it changes your mood. So we have to look at like how we sitting, and that that promotes how we grow in our mindset. So it's like a it's a long road that people take, and and this is not no. You got to do this in a weekend. This is a life, a lifestyle, and I love what I do and what I get to do because every day, I'm I'm really doing research. I'm doing. I was doing research before this call, and after I get off this call, I'm gonna do research, and then I have a training call that I'm gonna do. So I I consistently work to stay sharp. It's hard. Um, a lot of events going on in the world. I, I was just offered to go to San Antonio. For a, a basketball game, we had VIP seating. I couldn't go. I had other stuff I had to I had to do. But it's coming back around. You know that's that's only one time, but it's going to come back around. I know. I mean, I know it'll come out again. It's you know San Antonio is not my team, but anyway. But uh, just to have that is, is a blessing. But I have to look at and, and weigh the odds of should I go to San Antonio, you know, be at the game. But I know I got other stuff to do that's more important than that. You know, there's some stuff more important to where the way I look at it, what I was told back in the day, I'm going to give y'all what my mentor told me. um, Because I used to be like a real (laughs) fan of the basketball game. You know, I'm a big fan of March Madness. Back in the day, I used to be peeled, peeled to the TV, literally I wrote down how many hours I was watching TV, and it came up to, one, at one point in time, it was like six hours of TV. Once I got off work, I was in the March Madness. I was looking at the NBA games, and then my mentors had told me, Charles, you're spending a lot of time watching these, you know, these professionals. At the time, I think it was LeBron James out there doing his thing. So you're spending a lot of time watching these guys. He said, they have their millions. I'll never forget this. He said, they have their millions. When are you going to get yours? That, that statement changed my life. That one statement made me look within and figure out, like, what the heck am I doing with my time? Because all we have is time, family. And I'm going to tell you how it really works. We have time and memories. And when you start running out of time, All you have left is the memories. And so you don't really feel that until tragedy starts. If you get struck by tragedy, you're going to start thinking of the memories and how much little time you have left, maybe with that person or maybe you as a person. That's when it life hits you. You're like, okay, I'm going to have to start making some changes because I just heard from a guy. He's about 64, 65 years old. He has uh, terminal cancer. He's selling everything he owns, and he's buying an RV, and he said he's about to hit the road and actually live life. So uh, let me just keep it real with y'all. My thought process is, so for the last 65 years, what have you been doing if you haven't lived life? So now that he has that, Now he's thinking about, okay, I need to change some things, and I haven't lived yet. He said he hasn't lived yet, family. 65 years, what have you been doing? If you have not lived in 65 years, what does that mean? That's all I'm thinking about. Like, my goodness, we haven't even begun to live yet. So, you know, I I bring that stuff up because those are the things that close and, like, hit you in the head. Like, oh, my goodness, like, we really need to evaluate what we're doing, how we're doing it, how we're moving, what we may leave behind or may not. If you care anything about your people that's that's going to be left here when you're gone, you know, you got to leave something. And that's a great segue to I'm going to talk about the money. So now I told you I was going to do it. (laughs) Now let's talk about you becoming the bank. And this is going to be a very short intro and I want Y'all to go out and find the CPA or attorney, tax attorney, whoever, uh, insurance person so you can get this done. This is about insurance. Now, here's my disclaimer. I'm not an attorney. I'm not a CPA. I'm just giving you options to discuss with your legal representatives. Now, I can play an attorney on TV. Believe that. 
Now to the money, becoming the bank. Everyone should do this because we all need insurance anyway. So this is called, some of y'all heard about it, infinite banking. And I'm just going to gloss over it real quick. I may bring my insurance person up here at some point and break it down, but it's not that difficult to understand. And I tend to stay in my lane and let the experts do what the experts do. I'm going to give you a quick example. When you buy a house and you buy a car, more often than not, you go into the bank, they're going to give you a loan, right? With from the bank, Let's say you have the house, a loan from a bank, you're going to be paying at least the first seven years, interest, 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 a lot of interest is going to be paid. Now, I don't know about you. I've seen interest payments on the houses. Let's just go with a, a round number of 2500 a month, and that's just your interest. I'm just using that as an, just an example. So you multiply by that by 12 by the end of the year, you pay $30,000. So if that by the end of the year was – $20,000 or $15,000. Would you rather, this is just a quick question, would you rather give that fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 to the bank or would you rather give it to yourself? <laughs> and if you chose the latter, like all of us will, then you, sir, ma'am, are a, a, a great, great, great person to get into what we call infinite banking. That's the way to leverage an insurance uh, arm, and I'm not going to say what type. I want you to go to your insurance expert and, and ask them about an infinite banking. They may or may not know. If they don't know, find somebody else because somebody out there does know. And you can use that and, and pull dividends and money from that policy to pay for your home. You can use that to pay for your car and you become the bank because once you're using your own bank, those interest payments come back to you. So it's like a self-licking ice cream cone. <laughs> that's, the best, that's the best analogy I can give you. There you go. So the other thing I, I want to know, uh, I'm, I'm going to throw out there, that's the one thing I want you to do. I just want to say to Ms. Kimmy, thank you for providing this platform, the Alation family. Everybody's out there still working, you know, still grinding, even though we're, you know, we up against the ropes and we're fighting everything. The whole country is fighting, you know, the whole world, really, and everything that we have to deal with. And I'm going to keep it light and not go into all the stuff that we have to deal with on a daily basis just to be, have some sense of normalcy. I'll keep it that way. So what I want to do, I want to pray us out. Uh, dear Lord, please give us the strength and the mental fortitude that we need to move forward to know that everything will be okay because everything happens on your time. Please open our eyes and our hearts to you. I pray that you will calm any fear, any anxiety that we may be feeling. Please guide our thoughts so that we can push through along on our journey. Continue to bless us and our families and keep us safe and keep us healthy. And we may not always see the clear picture, but we know you didn't bring us this far to only bring us this far. We still remember that time and time again, you've given us the right path and you've given us mercy. We know that we are creatures of habit. Continue to guide us as only you can through life's trials and tribulations. In your name I pray, amen, amen, and amen. And this is Charles McCutcheon, a Mrs. Joyce's son. Hey, y'all take it easy. I feel like Bruce Banner. Can't nobody stop me. My plug got the answer. I know my God got me. I'm unstoppable. You can't stop with this meant to prosper. Got them hits like an LA Dodger. God chose me, put me on the roster. Chasing goals, I want Grammys and Oscars. Took some losses, but I'm still a winner. Been forgiven, but I'm still a sinner. Wanna see me fail? That won't happen though. I'm the front page in the center fold. I can't be stopped, I got the power. My enemies looking real sour. Trying to hold me back like rush hour. All obstacles, I straight devour. No one's gonna stop me, I promise I don't play. You don't wanna with me, I'm coming, no delay. Hear a lot of talking, no matter what he say. Turning up the hustle, I'm bringing that heat wave. He say, she say, you can't stop me. He say, she say, you can't stop me. He say, she say, you can't stop me. Coast to 
coast, I rest the host to host. I got the Holy Ghost, I do not need to boast. Nah, strength within, release through the pen. Write about my sin, cause it inspires man. Humble with the talent, let him put me on high. The power that is in me can't be seen like Wi-Fi. Overcome and look at fear and tell it bye bye. Undefeated through the Lord, no, I won't lie. Oh my, oh my, you don't wanna waste time, it'll fly by, fly by. Came into the game, it was all in vain. Switched up a frame, now I'm in my own lane. Gotta see the vision, get a plan, make it clear. Pregnant sister, hustle on, I will appear. Never quit, stay the course, trust me. Even when you think the dream is coming late. I've already had a lot of reasons I can throw in the towel. But the spirit living in me doesn't ever let me know how. Out of all the rappers claiming what they're really not like, wow. I see a lot of foolery not fooling me, I gotta call a foul. Can't be stopped, will not quit. I got goals, I'm gon' hit. Go so hard, I'm so lit. Mind don't him, homie, that's it. He say, she say, you can't stop me. 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 Wrote this verse on the resurrection. Steps on in, healed my infection. Since that day, I've had your protection. No question about it, my best selection. Got the picture like panorama. All glory up to Hosanna. My fire lit, started going hammer. That's why I feel like Bruce Banner. He say, she say, you can't stop me. He say, she say, you can't stop me. He say, she say, you can't stop me. He say, she say, you can't stop. 